everybody shall be connected. Are you ready? Are you ready? Clap your hands. Shake hands with your neighbor. Greet your neighbor. Take your seat. Exodus chapter 14. Let's see. Exodus. I'm reading from verse 13. And Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you. And you shall hold your peace. And surely they saw God's salvation that day. They didn't miss God's delivering power that day. Because when you look at verse 30, so the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Church of the living God, how were the Egyptians that day? How were the Egyptians that day? The Bible says they were dead. Say dead. In other words, how did God save Israel that day? He saved Israel by allowing the Egyptians to die. They saw the saving power of God that day, that very day. In other words, whatever is conjured against the child of God, whatever is thrown your way, say the Egyptians, say the Egyptians that I see today, say the Egyptians that I see today, say I shall see again no more forever. In other words, that sickness you see today, that poverty that you see today, that lack that you see today, Jesus is dealing with it now. This is the service that I came for today. I came for nothing less but to tell you some things that are before you now. Church, it will be like as water's gone by. After today, after we pray today. Ah. Oh my God. Say the Egyptians that you see. Say my neighbor. Say the Egyptians that you see today. You shall see them again no more. Say no more, no more. Say no more, no more. How many people understand no more, no more? Wow. Sorry, I don't know Africans how they've interpreted. For the benefit of some people, but you are not going to see it. It's not going to be there. The symptoms will pack and go. Let's prepare for this new era. I see children of God entering in. Because why? He says in 14, he says the Lord will fight for you. Say, the Lord will fight for me. You don't need to fight this battle. Like you said in Second Chronicles 2015. Don't be dismayed because of these multitudes. 
Don't fear the Ammonites, the children of Ammon. Don't, don't fear these people. Come against them. Because why? The Lord is with you. He says you don't need to fight this battle. He says to Jehoshaphat, the battle is the Lord's. Say the battle is the Lord's. Say it is not my battle. Say my neighbor, it's not your fight. Say it's not your fight. Say it's not about you. Say it is Jesus' fight. Church. This is the mentality we must have as believers. We come against difficulty, we come against mountain. We must know upon whom we must lay our allegiance. Because the battle is the Lord's. You don't need to fight here. It is exactly like this today. You don't need to fight. Say, I, I don't need to fight. Say, I don't need to fight. Say, the battle is the Lord's. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Zechariah 2 7. Let's go there. Up Zion, escape you who dwell with the daughter of Babylon. For thus says the Lord of hosts, He sent me after glory. To the nations which plunder you. For he who touches you touches the apple of his eye. These nations have spoiled you. So the glory of the Lord that is manifested in our presence has sent us against these nations that plundered you, that spoiled your life. In other words, whoever plundered you in your life, war against them, war against them, war against them, war against them. whoever spoiled your children, war against them. Are you with me, church? Whoever plundered your husband, war against them. In other words, verse 7, deliver yourself, O Zion. Escape, O Zion. You that dwell with the daughter of baby long. Verse 7. God is going to deliver people today. I say you are going to escape. You have sat in that situation quite long now. It's quite some time. So, I mean, it's not good to receive for 12 years. Ask the woman with the issue of blood. The Bible so, says she was weak. She was down. She was dilapidated. She didn't have money. You know, when you sit in a problem for quite long, that problem changes. It becomes your way of life. You don't see yourself without that problem. But today, what God is saying to people is say, you shall escape. You shall escape. You shall escape. You shall escape. You shall be delivered. Say, whosoever touches me touches the pupil of God's eye. Say, whosoever touches me touches my father's eye. In other words, if you touch your hair, you are touching somebody's eyes. And I say to you now, God is going to respond to that situation in your life. God is going to respond and act against those nations that plundered your life or against those people that spoiled your life. Are you, are you with me, church? For he who touches you touches the apple of his eye. I spoke once, I think, in this church about the inheritance of Jacob. 
I just want us to go over it again. He says in verse 10, I'm reading Deuteronomy 32, verse 10. He found him in a desert land and in the wasteland, a howling wilderness. He encircled him. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. God formed a circle around Jacob. Because why? He loved Jacob as his son. The son of the covenant. He says, I put him in a circle. Though he was so thirsty, he's from a waste, des wasteful desert. God started putting Jacob in a circle. I say today the same thing shall happen to some people I prophesy God will put you in a circle God shall put some people inside this circle Say he encircled him. Speaking of Jacob, say he encircled him. After discovering Jacob in that sorry state, some people almost died. You've heard about his testimony. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've heard his testimony. I'm sorry, we don't have a camera yet. But hey, no matter how God will find people, He will put them in a circle. Say He encircled him. Say He encircled him. Say He instructed him. In other words, God will give you instruction, and you must do as per the instruction. Listen to God's instruction, follow God's instruction. God's sake, don't disobey the man of God because it's not the young man speaking to you. It is God speaking to you. Therefore, take instruction. Say he encircled him. Say he instructed him. Say God instructed Jacob. God circled Jacob. Number three, according to verse 10, he kept him as the apple of his eye. Oh Let us be open for his instruction. I'm awaiting God's instruction today. People, that's how I progress. I don't do anything apart from instruction. Right now, if you say, stop preaching, shut up. I will stop. Amen. If you say, start praying for the sick now. I will start praying for the sick. Or if you say, call for that lady, you see that dark and complexion woman. Call. I'll just go straight to the woman. I don't ask flesh and blood. I don't confirm with flesh and blood. It depends for Jesus Christ. So the Lord alone led him. Verse 12. So the Lord alone led him. Say he led him. Say God alone led him. Say the Lord alone led Jacob. So the Lord alone led Jacob and there was no foreign God with him. Say the Lord alone shall lead me. Say the Lord alone like Jacob shall lead me. Say there shall be no foreign gods with me. Say there shall be no foreign gods with me. Why? Because the Lord alone 
shall lead me say he shall keep me like the apple of his eye say he shall encircle me say God shall instruct me like Jacob God shall instruct me please say it because when you are saying it the word says you are confessing it what is confession? confession is saying the same things that the Lord has said with, about us in the word hallelujah 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 say he encircled me say he encircled me say God shall instruct me today say God shall encircle me today say he will keep me like the apple of his eye say the Lord alone shall lead me say the Lord alone shall lead my family the Lord alone shall lead my husband that's why the husband is the captain, is the captors of the home, is the head of the home. Captain, captors. But for the husband to leave the home properly, he must be under submission to the Lord. You can't just say, I'm the head, I'm the head of this house. I'm the head. When you are not under submission yourself, where are you leading this home to if you are not under Jesus? That's why you are leading your family to which doctors? The best for Jesus Christ. So, there shall be no foreign gods with you. Like Jacob, the Lord alone will lead you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say the Lord alone. Let him. Say the Lord alone. Let Jacob. Say there was no foreign God. With Jacob. Say the Lord kept him. As the apple of his eye. Clap your hands. In other words, Zechariah 2 8 states it clearly that he who touches you touches the apple of his eye. He who touches the child of God touches the apple of God's eye. So he who touches me touches my father's I say he who touches my children touches the pupil of God's eye say he who touches my wife touches the apple of his eye who touches your who touches whoever touches your business whoever touches your car whoa I say woe. I say woe. I say woe unto him. Give your hands. This is what the Lord said to me this past week. He said, My son, prepare for this. Prepare for this. He says, I will give you more power. He said, I will give you fresh strength, new anointing. More anointing, say more. Say more. Say more. Say more. Say more. And our church, remember yeah. that we have suffered a lot. Me and my family have suffered a lot here in Swaziland because of this anointing power. Of course, if I didn't have anointing power, 
fight. If I didn't have this anointing, there was not going to be any suffering. We would have avoided a lot of things up till to date. Now, here comes the word of the Lord to me, unexpectedly. God says, he tells me, my son, I am going to give you more anointing. <laughs> I go like, oh my God, does he want me to suffer more again? Because to this day, my family have been abused ridiculed. The church has been ridiculed because of the anointing in my life. But God says something, something is coming. So now the word goes on. It says I'm going to give you more power. Why? Because I want this world to know who am I. Amen. And I want this nation in particular, Swaziland, to worship only me. People must know without a shadow of doubt. Then he says he's going to do something that has never been done before. Oh, I, 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 I'm saying this so lightly before you, but you know, when I received this word in me, it did something, and I just, I was so touched, people, when God spoke this word. He says he's going to do something that has never been seen before. And this world, so that particularly this country will know who has sent the man of God. Because why God is now angry, people. At what has transpired, at what has transpired, people, people were busy pricking the eye of God preaching the eye of God because God told me what they've done to you they were busy pricking my eye I was patient and patient and patient at this was the people because I love them so much but they continue doing what they are doing now you shall see he said he will give that anointing power for the reason or the sole purpose because God wants to do a, a, it's an end time demonstration, I don't know, but something that will baffle the minds of people, something that has never happened before, have seen, have been seen before. Yeah. I shall be anointed. Like David says, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Say 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 fresh oil. Clap your hands. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. So, what he said, he said, just stand still. Do not be afraid. Like your children. He even quoted you. He said, don't be afraid like your children in the church. Some of them. <laughs> because why? These people may still try to do something. There are small things that they are going to try to do. But it's just like the last kick of a dying horse. He says, little, little. don't be afraid. You are going to receive something fresh, something new. I will give you more power. I know a lot of you are jealous. That's why you're not clapping hands. That's why you're not clapping hands. But let me tell you, our God loves us. 
And my God loves me. He loves me. I know about that. I know about that. So, he said, don't be afraid. We are watching over you. In other words, the protection is there, church. Because if not God, what would have happened to me? If God was not there, what would have happened to my life up to this far? Because they've done everything, church. They've done everything. And I'm not talking about common people. I'm speaking about powerful men. They tried everything. They tried to chase this church out of Mavuso. Everything. They tried to come, but still we're standing by their grace. By his grace. Say 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 by his grace. By his grace. Say the Lord shall fight for me. Say the Lord will fight for me. Say the battle is the Lord. Say I shall stand still. Say I shall see the salvation of the Lord. Lift your hands, you people. That's what God said to me. This week. That's what he said to me. And I'm passing it over to you. Not in a proud way. But so that you can see how much I depend upon him. So that you know how much my life depends upon God. Are you with me, church? God uses people. He uses people that are available. So I believe that he has seen this life, he has seen my life. He's representing something that he can count on, something that he can use. For his glory, God bless for Jesus. Lastly, this is what he told me. He said, I know all the people that troubled you. I know all the people that troubled you, which means including the church and my family. He said, I know them one by one. And he said, something is coming upon them. Are you with me, church? Are you with me? He said, point blank. He told me, your enemies are going to die. How did God save the Israelites from the Egyptians? How did they see salvation? Verse 30 tells you that they saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Some salvation, some deliverance is not going to be accomplished until Pharaoh and his courts die. It's not complete. It's not complete apart from them lying on the seashore. Because we've prayed for people to be saved. We've prayed for people to repent. We've done all sorts of things that you can think of. So God told me clearly, he said, they will die. He said to me, wait, stand still. He said, if you, 
if you care about reading the newspaper, you must start looking at newspapers very soon. Because it will be all over. That's a parable. Clevens for Jesus.